Being a Jew, awesome. Managing personal finances, not so awesome. Welcome to Kosher Money. Welcome to another episode of Kosher Money. Tonight, on this Thursday night, Erev Shabbos, we have Rabbi Yosef Kushner. Came in special from Lakewood. We appreciate that. People want to know, who's Rabbi Yosef Kushner? Where is he from? What does he do? <laughs> um, I, I am in the base of Ad Bezden in Lakewood. Um, that's not probably the reason you invited me. You invited me because I wrote um, a few books on commerce and business. And, and the first one, which was the most, uh, most is Shovel Chol Nefesh, it's more applicable to most people, is called Commerce and Shabbos. And what happened is about 10 years ago, a little more, someone, someone I was learning in Kyle, I'm still in Kyle, and someone called and asked me about eBay, about selling on eBay and auction, and maybe we'll get into the nitty gritty halachas, but this is more general. Someone asked me about selling on eBay. Now, my father-in-law, his name is Rav Shlomo Miller from Toronto, and he's like the, the leading Pisic in Lakewood. So I called him, this is a very basic question, and he asked me like, what's eBay? And I, I was just disturbed <laughs> because that means nobody ever asked. I mean, it would have filtered up. Not ask him, but ask a Rav, and then the Rav wouldn't have known. It should have filtered up at that point that people should have asked that question. It's a very basic question. You have a sale that's, you know, ending on Shabbos and things. Or you're selling, or you're buying, you put in an auction. But either way, it would be a very, a very simple question, and no one asked that question. So that itself was like a little of a red flag in my mind that people are just not being trained to ask basic questions. And then the answer, there was no answer. Meaning, what was that particular question related to eBay? Meaning the question is that he's buying something and the auction's concluding on Shabbos. Concluding on Shabbos. So he's essentially executing an action that would be a, a purchase on Shabbos. You mm -hmm. know? And it didn't feel right for this person. Even though the payment... Well, sometimes, Isn't... well, even if the payment will be later, but that's all okay. part of the, you know, that's, we can get into the meat okay. and potatoes. But he understood, there was something in his, it, it wasn't right by him. So he called me, um, and then I, I called my father-in-law. He had no idea what eBay is. There was really no answer because he didn't understand what eBay is. So I had right. to really sit down with him. We went through a lot of eBay. And, and that's really was where it started, that I realized that there's a, and it really started with technology, technology, selling, buying, retail on, on online. It was kind of just starting out 12, 13 years ago, you know, more mainstream. Sure. And um, that's where it started, and I was going to write like a little contrast. <laughs> but then other things started popping up, like people were shipping on Friday and warehousing, and then Yom Tif and, and FedEx doing overnight deliveries. So then I had to have a chapter on deliveries and things, and then people were getting deliveries on Shabbos. When could they use it? Much of Shabbos, things. And from there, I started like getting a little involved in other industries like real estate and nursing homes, and we added industries, right? And we, and and I didn't I didn't spend a lot of time in it. And my wife jokes like she she doesn't know when I wrote it. <laughs> and we we ran like a thousand copies with Feldheim, mm -hmm. and, and it just like sold out. And then like another thousand, another thousand, another thousand. And there was a, it was really a vacuum that that and Rabbanim a lot by Rabbanim like they they didn't have access to to the information of how these businesses were running, mm -hmm. and and I, and I was. Took a lot of research, and I was familiar with a lot of these businesses, you know, how they ran. So that's what happened. So we had this commerce in Chavez, and it's it's well over 10,000, close to 20,000 copies. Um, and people use it, and it, it, it became, had a big following. And uh, that's how it is. It, you know, sometimes you do something, and you don't realize it was such a vacuum. You know, businesses, I'm sure it's also like Yeah. That, so know. So let's get into that. So... You wrote a book, Commerce Shabbos. Are Commerce you, and Shabbos, yeah. Are you fielding hundreds of questions a month from people? I mean, I'm assuming in the book, people can see how to contact you, right? right. Yeah. So it, it's a lot of, it's funny, it's a lot of Rabbanim. So it splits. Out of town, it's a lot of Rabbanim that constantly call me. Uh, dozens and dozens of people a week. Emails. and th These Rabbanim don't feel like that maybe even their congregants will fully understand um, the answers, like right. they call me and they're like, how does this work? And then they, they, they know how to speak. But but in town, well, you know, people who have yeshiva education, they call me straight. It was literally an afterthought that I put in an email address. I, literally, at like, the end, I call me and say, you know what, maybe someone will contact me. Maybe someone will read this, you know, and I put in an a, a email address and it just blew up. Mommy blew up. So that's what happened. That's um, So I do I do feel I feel a lot, a lot of questions um, on, a, on a daily, weekly basis, a lot from people and business owners and a lot from Rabbanu. So Zevi Wallman was the one who introduced us, and I watched a video of yours where you gave a speech in Baltimore. And I loved what you said about people know 
a ton about their own business. But when it comes to halachas related to that, right. you feel like there's a gap there? Yeah, it's it's amazing because I deal with people, small businesses and, and mid-sized businesses and big, huge businesses. I'm talking about, you know, household names, people that you know, huge businesses. And, and anything, and when they call, you have to really start discussing their business. And most people don't just sit with, with anybody and just ask them about their business. But if you call me with a shayla, I have to really understand how your business is structured. And it always took me that... These people know everything about their business. It's amazing because their businesses are massive. And sometimes there are divisions that they're not intimately familiar with, but they know right away who to call. And that guy right away knows the answer. And they'll get him on the line. Okay, I'll call him. And they'll get him on the line. Um, when, when I ask people, like, what do you do about X? What do you do about Shabbos? What do you do about the fact that you have non-kosher food? You know, you're not let to buy and sell non-kosher food. That's an Issa They They could be aware, but they're like, I think we have, um, I think my partner took care of that. I'm like, okay, your partner on the line. <laughs> and the partner's like, no, 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 this was you. And, and it becomes, right. they, they develop a stutter. And right. they're like, ah, bah, bah, bah. And I'm like, what is going on over here? You know. And this is a very important point. I want to make this yeah. point is that I have, you know, my opinions of what, what is okay to do for Shabbos, you know, and what is not okay. And, and, you don't, and not everyone has to agree with me. Um, but whatever you do for Shabbos, let's talk about Shabbos, but you could do a lot of examples. Whatever you do, you really have to know what you're doing. You know, in other words, what I mean to say is your kid asks you, like, you have a business, whatever it is, you have a, a nursing home business or you're in hospitality or, or, or whatever you're doing, or even you're selling online real estate and you have a superintendent that's managing. Your kid asks you, um, your business is not closed on Shabbos. Mm -hmm. You have to have a good answer for that. Now, let's say you do a shtar mechir, and, and many of them I don't think are done correctly at all. At least know that this is what I do. This is how it works. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not the greatest thing, but this is what I could do now, and mm -hmm. maybe eventually I'll be able to do better, whatever it is. But you better have an answer. It's just not, it's not an appropriate thing. You know, Shabbos is not something that we're not talking about. You know, some minig not to, to I'm, not, I'm not being the Zal's name, mm -hmm. but we're not talking about some minig not to, you know, uh, wash, make a, lawn, make a wash on, on, on Rosh Chodesh. Mm -hmm. We're talking about Shabbos. This is extremely fundamental to, you know, the Jewish people. A person who keeps Shabbos and doesn't keep Shabbos, you know, we pass in is, is Akum L'chol Dabe. It, it's the most severe basic thing. You have to mm -hmm. keep Shabbos. You have to know about that. So Why do you think there's such a gap? Why, why, why don't people know, why don't people know enough? as it relates to the halachas of business, Shabbos, et cetera? It's a good question. <laughs> um, this is what I think. I'm just going to tell you my theory. Okay. My, my theory is, is that if you would not know a very basic halacha, in, in, that's, that's negeah. Let's just give an example. Let's say in Hilcha Shabbos. Mm -hmm. Let's say you don't know about Hilcha's Muksa or Bayra, right? Mm -hmm. So you're not allowed to take um, the bad from the good. Mm -hmm. Imagine you just were absent that week. <laughs> you don't know that halacha. And you're going to be, eventually you're going to be by a kiddush and you're going to do that. You're going to be taking out uh, the pits out of the watermelon. I'm just mm -hmm. giving an example. Some people won't say anything. That's, that's a personality. And some people will say something. You're going to, you're going to find out that, that there's something missing in, in, your, in, your, in your education that, you know, you have, to, you, you have to take care of this. And then you can make a decision, you know. That's when it's happening in a public right. forum, yeah, right? Yeah, but, but right, exactly. But it, it's really everything and anything. We we live in we live in, a, in within a community, and it's by design like that. We we don't live, you know. Sometimes you go on vacation somewhere deep in the Poconos, you're like, oh, this is great. I, I wish I could move here, but right. you can't move there. Right. It's not negay, and it's by design. There's no kosher food. There's no yeshivas. There's no mikvah. It's not negay. We live within a community. It's gonna even if you do something in your kitchen, you're gonna have guests. You're gonna have in you people. If you don't know how special, it's going to come up. I'm talking about a basic halacha. People do not ask other people what is going on in their business. It's just not basic um, rudimentary uh, um, etiquette. It's etiquette manners. Right. It's just not. It's just not appropriate. <laughs> That's the way right. it is. Right. You could live next door to someone. You know generally what he does. You can't start asking him questions. It's. It's. it's and I tell this to old people. If, if even not in the context of business, if somebody is like asking you things about yourself. You say, mind your own business, even though he's not talking about business. It's like, that is the analogy of like someone asking inappropriate, you know, you know not acknowledging boundaries. Mind your own business. Mm -hmm. Business is like, that is the uh, muscle. You know, you, you, you keep to yours and I can. So what happens is, is that a guy can go 30, 40 years and, and 
basic things, no one's going to ask him anything. Mm-hmm. And it's not the Rabbanim's fault. The Rabbanim don't, they're not auditors. They don't sit and audit, audit people's businesses. So I think what happens ultimately is, is that it's just no, it's just that, the social net that we have, it just doesn't apply to businesses. I walk into Kadeshim on Shabbos and I see the Jewish caterer. He has all his employees. I'm like, this guy has a maid. He's working seven days, <laughs> seven a, week. days a week. How does he do that? I, I want to tell you something. I've asked this to people way greater than myself. Yeah. You know, I, this is a, a little of a side thing, but the, the Ramban in Vayikra, he says that, you know, we can't, we're not allowed to buy and sell and do business on, on Shabbos. That's all the Rabbanon. It's a Mecca Chememka buying and selling and muks and money and all these older Rabbanon. So he says in the Midbar, there were no other Rabbanons. So people went to davening. They they sat down, they had a Suda, you know, they had Shama Vizachar, they had the Suda mm-hmm. in the Midbar, and then they went to work, <laughs> right? So he says that Avada is someone who's working on Shabbos. It's an Isidar Isa of, of, of Tishpas. You have to rest. The Darabonans are, if you're really resting, but you want to just do one, you know, here and there, haphazard transaction. Mm-hmm. But a person to work like he works the rest of the week is also their ice. And I was always wondering, so I, what, how do the caterers get away with it? And I've asked this to people, forget about Amir Akam. They're, they're actually sitting and, and, I don't know what, we shouldn't be attacking caterers. No, no, but, <laughs> but I mean, you can pick any profession right. that has some no, sort of operation. this is a little different because yeah. this is the caterer himself might be involved. Uh, uh, that's what I meant to he say. He oversees it from afar. If, well, if he's not there, then that's right. okay. But I'm talking about, sometimes, the guy He's, he's working. <laughs> you right. know, he can't work. It's a good point. But um, that's what it is. I, I want to tell you a story because, and I feel bad. I said this, Brab, a few times, and I, I is feel Is this bad. the candy bar story? Yeah, I, feel, I love it. I love it. Please, <laughs> I feel please check. On this guy. This no. guy's going to come after me one day. <laughs> Hopefully he's not one of the 10,000 listeners. This happened really listeners. early on. And okay. it, it was really another thing. It was an eye-opener to me because, um, because it just brought out this point that people are not trained. They're not trained to take look at their business from a halachic standpoint, their business is like a private thing. It's a money making machine, and, and it's almost like halacha stops there. And it's 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 something that people have to kind of re- recalibrate and retrain themselves. But there was this older older fellow that called me. He had a, um, a mini bar, a contract with a mini bar in, in, a, in a big national hotel hotel chain, and it was kind of primitive. He had a, a gentile on site that was. Um, checking what was purchased, and then they had to go to the front desk, and they held the credit card, and then they charged it. Anyways, um, we were discussing, he called me about Shabbos, and it was a legitimate question, and I, I told him how it has to be set up, and then literally as an afterthought, because I, I was wondering like what he sells, I asked him, you know, and most people say, no one will ask him this, it's not your business, but I said, I said, what's like, you know, you know this? No, but uh, okay. I, I heard the English translation. Oh, okay. But do, I, I do like it with the Yiddish uh, feel the, the, and then the, the, the translation. The anyway, yeah. so, 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 so he said, I said, what's for Koyster? What do you sell? So, so he says, Snickers and Reese's pieces, you know. Uh-huh. So, so, and then he t- I said, for Koyster, for Koyster van. Do you sell wine? So he says, yeah, for Koyster van. They have like, these little wines. Yeah. So, so, um, so, so I said, Weissman doch. I said, kosher van? You know, kosher wine? So he says, no, it's kosher van. So I said, weiss bin doch, me kenne ich verkaufen, it's kosher van. This is an isser, you know, let it sell non-kosher wine. It's also about no. So it's a mfur shalach and shalchanach. So I said, you know, let it sell non-kosher wine. So he said, he, I don't know what he thought I was saying. So he said, na nisch yidin vergoyim. In other words, he thought I was worried that yidin not going to be buying non-kosher wine. Uh-huh. So first of all, how does he know who buys it? But whatever it is. So he said, no, 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 it's vergoyim. Goyim are buying it. He, he didn't. So I said, no, 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 something should tell me yidin goyim. Yidin, my cancer is vergoyim, nisch kusher van. So use So, you know, it's also, it's, a bit, it's prohibited. <laughs> so, so he said, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, the older guy. And, you know, I want to tell you something. This is the guy that called me. A lot of people don't call. They don't want to. This is right. a guy that's an outlook guy. He makes a, it. He picked up the phone. He made a phone call. How many people in the last few months picked up a phone call about their business? This is an outlook right. guy. He's not. He's not fooling around. So I said. I said. So who's here? So he said. Azoy. I said. Azoy. Azoy. So he's. So he's like. Mistama is there. Was is matadem. Mistama is damekilim. You know. Probably there are some that allow it. I said. He said. Mistama is there. Shaila vegendim. You know. It's probably a shaila. I said. Zinish ken shaila. So, so he's like quiet and, and he, he didn't know what to tell me. Right. <laughs> so he says, Younger man, I have not got even a second name. First of all, when the guy says, Younger man, he's <laughs> not good. He says, so, I didn't call you about this. <laughs> you know? I said, Mr. Gerecht, I'm not going to get You know, but and, and it, it, it shook me up a little because it, it's an amazing thing. And an older guy is doing, didn't know, he didn't know. You know, but are, are um, people scared to call because you 
you know, this younger man's going to shut down my business. No, no, if no, I no, no so one's getting questions. shut down. You know, I want to tell you something. Yeah. Someone just called me last week, I, I, and I was surprised because I don't. I now I I know what's going on. I, I'm surprised that this guy, this business was going on mm -hmm. <laughs> under my nose. I'm like, what's that? He's like, I literally had another eBay moment. I'm like, what? this guy called me. You probably know what this is. You, you ever heard of Turo, she, a car sharing service? Yes. Okay, yes. see your way ahead of me. And That's was, relatively new. It is relatively new. Okay, so this guy calls me. He's like, you know, we have this big chat. This guy calls me. I'm like, yeah. we have this big chat. Um, we have we have cars. We're, you know, we're, we're Turo. We're, we're part of Turo. Uh, Turo's a college. I'm like, <laughs> what? He's like, you don't know about Turo? I, I said, I what is anyways it's a car sharing service these are there's a whole chat in like where the guys who have like cars and they're, they're leasing them out uh like day by day week day by, by day week, yeah. yeah he explained me the whole economics right. of how it worked he he bought himself a an odyssey and people use that when they go to florida they don't go yeah, yeah so with this fellow companies. this fellow he said, he said he said i do construction i'm always out of town right and I'm 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 renting these uh Anturo, I'm renting these Maseratis for hundred right. dollars a day this is the greatest thing and I looked into the economics, and it makes sense because, the, the, especially places near the airport, that they have um, 25 out of 30 days these cars are being used. He's like, the Maserati costs a thousand. I don't know why I'm getting into the economics, but the Maserati costs a thousand dollars a month, yeah. and this guy's more than doubling his money. Right. So it's a great business, and he doesn't have to have one; he can have a few. So this fellow has a few, and the other fellow have a few, and this whole chat in Lakewood of these guys. And this fellow called me, asked me, told me, he put on the chat, like, what are we doing about Shabbos? You know, they have it in a parking lot, it's Kila's entry, people are coming on Shabbos and paying rent on Shabbos. Mm -hmm. And that's called Schar Shabbos, you can't earn money for Shabbos. Nothing to do with doing malachas, you're not allowed to earn money for something for Shabbos, Schar Shabbos. So he, he put it on the chat, what, what, what's, what are we doing about Schar Shabbos? Like, what? And for once, the chat was quiet. <laughs> and then someone said, you should call him. <laughs> so he called me, you know. Yeah. And I said, this is going under my nose for so long. Someone woke up, you know. Right. And it disturbs me because it, it, people are not 100% zoned in to be trained on such a thing. You really have to. I tell people like this. It's very hard. People don't know. Like, first of all, businesses evolve. So you got to ask today and tomorrow is different. Right. They don't know how to when they should ask, when they shouldn't ask. But what they really need to do is they need to look at their business as a whole, where they have halachic um, vulnerabilities, liabilities, whatever you'll call it. And, and different businesses have different vulnerabilities. So if you have a business, for example, that cannot close on Shabbos, for whatever reason, it cannot close. Like a nursing home would be, you know, that would be the, the prime example. It cannot close. Almost anything in the hospitality business cannot close. Um, and other, other businesses like that. So... So you, you have a, a vulnerability, and you need to learn about that vulnerability. Now, you don't have to become a Pisic, but you have to be educated to the point where you know what a Shaila looks like. So if you have like a rental business like Turo, or it could be uh, washing machines, that, you know, the automated washing machines, vending machines, whatever it is, so then you have a Shabbos liability. If, you're, if you have something where a business where non-kosher is being sold, you have a, a, it's a schayre vulnerability, right? And it goes on and on, and, and you have to educate yourself. You speak to your up, just you don't, forget about asking him every shayla now. Mm -hmm. Learn where your vulnerabilities are. That, that's the first step. And and then learn about it. And and this fellow who called him about Turo, he's like, so what should I do? So mm -hmm. I, I told him what to do, but I said, I'll tell you the truth, you need to learn about Tzachar Shabbos because things are going to change. You, you, you need to know what's yeah, what's a shayla, what's not a shayla. You need to educate yourself about Tzachar Shabbos. Because I was talking to him and he didn't really have a very good base. He didn't understand how a vlog works and things like that. Tzachar Shabbos is when it, 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 the action begins on Shabbos and ends on Shabbos. Correct. Well, well, you know, well, okay. so I heard the educated. share. I okay, heard the right, share. right. But so, meaning if someone's checking into your hotel on Thursday and checking out on Sunday. Then there's no problem. Right. Because right. the, the act. So, so, so you but if can't, a fellow checks into your hotel Friday night and right. checks out Shabbos afternoon, you have a problem. So a Yid cannot own a hotel. I didn't or, say you can't. No, can. no, I'm just trying to see because that's what's he going off in people's he heads. He has a problem. If I own he a has, vending machine, I have a problem. Well, a vending machine is different. I don't want to get into the meat and potato. A vending machine is retail. And I'm going to field all these questions if you don't answer Retail, oh. retail's okay. different. It's, yeah. it's interesting. Retail, when you're exchanging money for goods, is not is not Tzachar Shabbos. That's just an exchange. Mm -hmm. um, service industries, hospitality, rentals, these things, we just see profit. You didn't give. When I trade, so then we don't see a profit. We have a dollar, a worth item worth a dollar, and I trade it. That's not Tzachar Shabbos. Mm -hmm. um, even even though you made money, but you made money because you value, appreciate. Your uh -huh. person could inherit a soda, inherit uh -huh. a soda. He didn't pay a nickel, and then he sells it. That's just a trade. But um, where, where you're getting money for goods, if you have a, 
a business where you have subcontracted out people who are fixing things. And in Hilcha Shabbos, the workers are allowed to work because they're kablan and whatever the case is, but you're earning money. You, you have a therapy company. This is very, very relevant. People have therapy companies and the therapists are getting paid per session and, and they're allowed to work on their own schedule, but you're earning money on Shabbos. You have a Shabbos vulnerability. So I told him, I said, the best thing for you to do I don't know who you are. Mm-hmm. Is you should go to Dafnun Ches, learn it. Go to Simon Shinvav, learn it. Learn the Magen from, learn the Mishnah Bru. He's like, it's not happening. So I said, fine. I would. Ne- I don't like doing this, but I'll tell you the truth. You should buy my book. Mm-hmm. I have a chapter. I don't mean to plug my book. I know this sounds, sleep, but this is what you need to do. Mm-hmm. And the truth is, is that there's so m- there's really so much information on all levels out there. There's really very little excuses. Your book's on Amazon, by the way. My book's on Amazon. okay. No, no, yeah. people will. Yeah, ask. but I most people make sure are I cover within it. a farm store. Yeah, yeah. Farm stores, okay, yeah. good. Um, anyway, so. And I'm, I'm really seriously not plugging my book. The best thing is, is you should learn the sugya. But, but not everyone can. I, I totally understand that. And not everyone has a background to really get clarity starting from the Gemara and going straight through. So educate yourself enough that you understand the basic parameters of Shabbos. You don't have to become a Paisik Achrin on Shah Shabbos. You're not the Shah Shabbos Rebbe. But you, you do have to know enough to know what a shy looks like, you have to take your business as a whole. In general, where are my vulnerabilities? Um, you asked me if businesses close down. Businesses do not close down. Um, generally, I've never closed a business down. They need to be structured right. Mm. You know, people shouldn't be scared. It, it, and you could say, uh, you know, uh, you know, so there are people who call me and and they they, they start telling me, and I, I say, listen, this is what you need to do. You know, you have to your your manager has to become a cobbler, and then they start like. You have to, they start telling me, listen, I have a big business. I have uh, 200 employees. You know, they start like mansplaining to me <laughs> how, how big their business is. And I tell I said, I want to tell you, Habibi, I have people that have thousands of workers, thousands, and they're running it right. And, and there are people who have very small businesses. It can be done, and, and it needs to be done, and this is the way it is. And you want to have bracha, and you, and you want to have siyat dishmai. This is what you need to do. You understand? Love it. Um, the, it's funny because you wouldn't think this. One of the biggest problems people yeah. have is is they find out that that an employee or a subcontractor that that works on Shabbos is is, is a not from Yid, and there's a lifni Eva problem. You're not allowed to give a, a not from Yid a job on Shabbos. You're not allowed to give him things to do, even if you don't tell him to do it on Shabbos. But he's using your platform, your your platform meaning your business to be mechal Shabbos, mm-hmm. and that's a huge problem. And, and in, in, in a sense, that's sometimes I'm, I'm literally stuck. I, I'll tell you why I'm stuck. I'm stuck because legally there's not much you could do. You, you, you can't, you have a lot of workers, mm-hmm. and the, the non Jewish workers are working on their own schedule. They kablon him in Hilchis, Schiris, Poilam, and Shabbos. It's allowed. And to single out one employee and like, you're not working, <laughs> you are not allowed to work on right. Shabbos, is, is completely unacceptable in today's society legally just not acceptable you know and sometimes i really that's sometimes i, I honestly get stuck I, I you know and i try to make it as best as i can but people should know anyone who's listening it, it don't ever engage someone about if they're jewish <laughs> i know it seems like a friendly thing to do meaning you're, not, you're encouraging them not no ever if you have a nursing home don't ever ask your patients if they're jewish if you're hiring someone hiring someone because everyone's becheskus a guy uh-huh. right, right uh-huh. people are guy and you lose that chazaka as soon as the guy says he's a yid, because now right, right people who say they're a yid are a yid. Uh-huh. There's two ways a person's yid, either he acts like a yid or he says he's a yid. Uh-huh. So just as a etzah taiva, this is a public service announcement, um, don't ever ask someone if they're Jewish. And, it's, and now it's going to happen ultimately, unfortunately. Right. You know, Rosh Hashanah time, I'm also Jewish, and then right. sometimes like my mother's Lithuanian, and, they, right. and you know, like it sounds like they're the real deal. Right. You know? <laughs> and... Um, then you have a you have a problem. So there are times when things I, I don't have great aces, but I'm not saying to close their business. Right. And sometimes I just because of the legal restraints, I don't have terrific aces what they should do. Um, before they hire someone, they can try to get a feel for it. Sometimes it's things to do, sometimes it's not it's complicated. If anyone has such an arrange, such a situation, they really have to ask a shyly. It's not simple at all. We're talking about it there, I say right. it's not a, this is not a minute either. I've heard of Companies that have sold it to a non-Jew over right. a certain period is that is that halachically permissible to sell? Hey, this well, business will run a, on Shabbos. A business that runs on Shabbos. But I'm gonna to sell. Se- okay. I, I don't own it on Friday okay. and Saturday. Okay. 
people do it, okay? If you're asking my opinion, because right. you know, I'm here, so you're asking my opinion. I'm just going to say my opinion. I'm Everyone say has it. to ask their own law. Lo- Everyone local should ask that thereof. I'm going to tell you yeah. my opinion. This is the opinion that my father-in-law's opinion. This is a, a, um, a Rav, Rav Chaim Kohn. I don't know if you know who he is. He's a dying in Flatbush and Washington Heights. He's also very big in this space. He understands business very well, mm-hmm. and he's a tremendous Talmud Chachim. This knows is his eBay? opinion. Knows eBay? He, he understands real estate more. He has, no. I don't know if the nitty gritty he understands, but I've, I've spoken to him a lot. I once met him in Eretz and we sat down for a long time. He's, I, I punked me met him in Eretz right. um, This is Rabbi Moshe Feinstein's opinion, and I'm going to explain it to you in two minutes. Go this, ahead. I'm going to say in two minutes, and either, either we got it, I, you're going to get it. You're a very bright guy. But this is, I'm going to explain to you like this. When you have chametz, essentially you're, you're proposing, why don't we do what we do with chametz? Right. Pesach comes, we sell the chametz. It's not that complicated. It's it's not a new thing. It's as old. It's really really old. The Kedmonim discuss it. The truth is from from hundreds of years ago. It's not made up. Selling chametz, not made up. Now, does everyone love it? No, but it's a hundred percent a scamble. This is what we do, right? All the bottom do it. So I'm going to explain to you how it what works. When you have a chametz, it's a it's an equity based iser, which means the iser is to own it. That is the whole iser. You can't own it. So if the iser is to own it, and then you sell it. It's, it sounds very technical and people like smells interesting because you're really going to get it back. But ultimately, it's a technicality and you can call it a legal loophole. But if it's legal, it's legal. What, what you'd rather, an illegal loophole? It's legal, right? So that's called Mechir's Chametz and that's something inherently we all understand. Shabbos, the basics of Shabbos, the mechanics of Shabbos, it works completely different. A person can't have a Gentile working for them. It has nothing to do with equity. And Ramesha makes his point. You understand what I'm but saying? But he's not working for me. He, he owns is. the business. I know, yeah, I understand. But no, 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 forget about him. That? Forget about him. But, well, okay. I'll, tell, I'll explain what happens. Yeah. Okay, it's a good point. I'll explain what happens. You go to your Rav and he sells you business. Okay, this person didn't, I'm going to explain you the structure. Yeah, this yeah. person didn't pay for the business. Mm-hmm. There's a nursing home. Okay, so they throw out a number. $10 million it's yeah. worth? Yeah. Okay, so this person didn't pay for it. So what happens is he gives you a deposit of $10. He owes you $10 million minus $10. Now, I'm not in the business of giving interest-free loans, right? How am I getting the profits? Because he owes me $10 million minus $10. So what happens is it's like seller-financed. He owes me all this money, but I charge him interest, which is pegged to the profits of the company. It's the greatest story ever. Mm-hmm. I'm getting all the profits. I don't own the business. He owns it, right? Ultimately, the workers, I, don't, I, lo- I do not relinquish control until he pays me. And that legally, I won't relinquish control. He can't come and start wrecking the business. Mm-hmm. If he comes and telling people what to do, it's, it's, he's out, right? So the workers do not answer to him, they answer to me. Mm. So it's irrelevant who the equity of the business is. Imagine you walk into a Hilton. Do you own the Hilton? I don't. You do not, okay. So mm. if you would walk into the Hilton and tell the guy, tell any of the uh, of the employees in the Hilton, put me up hot water. Let's say you're staying in the Hilton, put me up hot water. So so are you allowed to do that? So everyone, you can't tell, you own the Hilton? He, you, he's your worker? He's doing it for you, he's working for you, right? It's Amir Akum. So when you have a business and you're telling your employees, your secretary, your, your, whoever you, your nurses, I'm talking about, I don't mean to pick a nurse, because mm-hmm. there's so many real estate, real estate has to deal with this because mm-hmm. they have superintendents and leasing agents, everything like that. So, so now the business doesn't belong to you. So the equity was transferred. But the issue was never the equity. The issue was, Gaim can't work for me. So this is the point Rabbi Moshe makes, and Chelek Dalit, Simon Nun Dalit, I believe. You can look it up. It's definitely somewhere there. Mm-hmm. And he, he goes through a, a list of things he doesn't like about what we call a shtar mechira, which is what you brought up. Mm-hmm. Um, and ultimately, he makes the following point. He says, Shkafikli doesn't like it, and, and, but he says, Vigam b'roiv pomim le'osa v'loi midi, which means usually you actually didn't do anything because the, yidin, the goyim are working at Daita de Yisrael. And that's the lotion of Rishonim. Goyim are not allowed to work at Daita de Yisrael. They're not allowed to work for Yisrael. So if you don't restructure your business, which means if the structure of the business was never touched, then usually by definition you didn't do anything. Uh, and, I, and this is as far deep as we can go. But that was understandable. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Very much. <laughs> I was going to say you can write a book on this, but you already did. <laughs> so I, I put on my WhatsApp status. I have Rabbi Yosef Kushner coming in. Yeah. Do you have any questions related to Meiser, ethics, Shabbos? We touched on a bunch. So I'd like to, you know, sort of rapid fire. Feel free to elaborate more if we can do maybe 30 seconds per answer, and we'll try to cover as many as we can. And again, with that disclaimer, speak to your local Orthodox right. rabbi. <laughs> this is uh, Rabbi Kushner's opinion. Meiser. It's a hot topic. We've spoken about it with um, other epi- in, in other episodes. Is it a halacha or is it a minute? 
Um, so that that's obviously a shaila. Okay. <laughs> so there's the Bach that says it's it's in Shem Lamed Shem Lamed Aleph, and you're there. The Bach says it's a minig and there's no makar. Mm-hmm. And there's the Taz. Others take umbrage with that, but really the Maram Rutenberg is a Rishon. Generally, when you have Rishon that a Rishon that they're not chelik on it, usually we go like that. The, the, the Maram Rutenberg does say it's a minig, and that's that's past just what it is. It's a minig, but. Before everyone, you know, gets all excited, it's a minute that was in Scabble that, that we're not allowed to be mavatl. It's like something that Clyde's well was mavatl. There mm-hmm. are many things like that. Right. You know, the Gemara says uh, davening Meyer is a rishos, but it's not. It's not really optional anymore. It's something that was in Scabble. So mm-hmm. there are differences la halacha. If it's a minute, it's not because it depends. You could you could say this is how I was mavatl it, and sometimes there are shyless like. Um, a, a fellow called me recently, this is just recently, a bachur in yeshiva, and he does uh, handiwork in the yeshiva. So he doesn't charge, but he, he, he does like Benaz Manim, he charges, but for the yeshiva, he doesn't charge. So he has his little side hustle going where he makes money. So he wants to discount, basically take off my every time he works for yeshiva, which is not, it's not 100% clear if you can or can't. And, and so the answer is, that's how he's macabre. He says, he's, he takes three people. This is how I'm giving my sir. That when I do work for free, it's coming off. It's a, you understand? So there, there's more flexibility. Mm-hmm. There's more flexibility. It, it goes for a lot of things. When you There's a whole shyly if you can count mitzvahs. When you're buying tzitzahs for people, it's filling other things. Does that, does that count? Does that count? And, and, and again, that's how I'm macabre to do my sir. There's more flexibility, but it's not appropriate for someone to say, it's a minute and I just don't keep it. Understood. You understand? When you're thinking, I want to just say one yeah, thing. Go ahead. One thing very important about mice, and that is again, we're not getting into the meat and potatoes of mice, but this is for sure, for sure, the most practical thing you have to know about mice is you need to separate mice into a separate account. If you do not do that, ninety percent of the time you're not giving mice because you feel like you're giving mice because every time you write a hundred dollar check, you feel it because right. it's coming out of your account. You're not giving mice. You add it up. It's not going to happen. It's not going to work. First of all, in a practical psychological sense, when you when you put my, when you get your, your, whatever your income is and you separate it into a separate account, that's easy to do. And now, what's in a separate account? It's burning a hole that you need to write checks. It's so much easier to write checks from your MySer account. It's not coming from your account. Mm. So it's like in a two-step. Psychological, psychologically, yeah. it's a very important thing to do. Right. But you will not generally give MySer unless you do this. Is MySer pre-tax or post-tax? MySer is is what you're netting. MySer is whatever you're bringing in. Bring in. Yeah, so- bring in. And then sometimes we have shyless people. Wait, is that not, after the government takes their share? Just to clarify, meaning meaning you don't have to give on what the government takes. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Um, that, if you have business expenses, obviously that that you don't give on that. It's whatever you you, you know you're taking home. So someone asks yeah. if it's after tax, which you're saying it is. What are other examples of items that you take off before you calculate my? So are there any? Is there anything else where? Yeah, oh, obviously. You, let's say I'm. I'm I'll, let's just give me a basic business. If I'm running a. If I'm running a um, a business, if I'm buying and selling goods, mm-hmm. and I'm taking in a million dollars, my cost of goods is eight hundred thousand. Obviously, you're only giving my on two hundred thousand. All your ex- business expenses. Oh, but what about personal expenses? What about general, tuition? Or? So that's a good question. General, well, general, well, tuition's a sell. Okay, we'll get, we'll get into that tuition's next. its own controversy yeah. because tuition's a Right, right. But generally speaking, whatever clears your business and, and comes to the personal side. Is is mechuyiv and meiser? If you want, I could explain it very simple. There's, there's something called stucker. Stucker means you have mechuyiv to give stucker. That's uh-huh. a meiser. That's mufurish. The difference between stucker and meiser is stucker is you have to give meiser of stucker. That's just what you have in your bank account when when it when it when it when it on it, on it comes. It's not a net. In other words, if I go, if I earn a million dollars, I'm gonna explain this as simple as I can. If I order a mil, or earn a million dollars, and then I go on a five hundred thousand dollar vacation. I'm 100 percent allowed to do that in Hilchot Tzedakah, right? And then I have a hundred dollars left when ani when ani comes. So in Hilchot Tzedakah, how much do I give? Hundred dollars. Ten dollars. Ten percent oh, of a hundred. Oh, meiser. Okay. That, that's meiser. Yeah. It doesn't go with your net. It goes with what you have. The same way when I want to buy an esrik, how much do I have to spend? A chaimish, up to a chaimish. So ten to fu- ten, a tenth to a fifth, right? Does it, do we make a difference what I had when I had a vacation? It makes a difference on circus how much you have in your bank account. You understand? Meiser, the Chiddush of Meiser, it's like a separate spreadsheet. It goes with what, it doesn't make a difference what you spent. It goes with what's coming in. What cleared your business. Whatever cleared your business, that's a separate spreadsheet. Before you take the $500,000 You could take it, but you still owe, you right. owe Meiser. The that's the Chiddush right. of Meiser. Right. Right. right, got it. Okay, so let's talk about tuition. We touched upon that. Tuition. So tuition, a person cannot take 
tuition for Meisha because he's an obligation. He has an obligation to t- to to, um, to teach his children. And Aye, all those dinner monies. Okay, and so very good. So yeah. I want to explain this because this is a very good negotiating tactic. Mm-hmm. I tell people to do if if they can. Mm-hmm. Whatever you're obligated to pay, that's your obligation to pay. Whatever the the committee. It sounds like they have committees. They do have committees. Yeah, and like with there's no committee, so right. there's just a base of what you pay, and then right. there's really what you what you, yeah. so. <clears throat> What the committee obligates you to pay, you need to pay, or homeschool him, so there's no maestro in there. If you could get it down, and you give, if you tell them, let's say they want $10,000, so you say, Hezekiah, my kid costs $7,500. I will give $7,500, and if Mitzvah Shem, I continue doing well, I will write you a $2,500 check by the dinner. But I'm not obligated to do that. But I'm telling you, in good faith, mm-hmm. I will try to do that. If I'm not making, if I'm not doing well, I can't. But if I can, I'm not going to give you $10,000 anyways. So here's the story. My kid costs $7,500. That's what I'm obligating myself to They're pay. telling you? if you, you have to ask them, what, is, I'm asking, what does that cost? Well, well whatever. What, yeah, you negotiate okay. it down. So some sort of base. No, because oh. you'll have some yeshivas that say tuition's $10,000. And you say, hey, just... How much is it to educate my kid? Because right. I know I'm paying for someone right. down the block, right, and that's right, okay. Right. So I want to know how much to okay. allocate from. But let's my... say they say we're not answering you. You need to pay ten thousand mm-hmm. dollars. So I don't see how you could deduct that from my sir. But if you can get it down, because you tell them, I am telling you, I'm a man of my word in good faith. If I can, I will write you a twenty five hundred dollar check by the dinner. But just I, w- I don't want to obligate myself mm. to that. I'm going to pay seventy five hundred. Right. So then the extra twenty five hundred could take off my sir. Instead, so. That extra twenty five hundred, when that comes in, it would be prohibited for him to give tzedakah to other places before giving to that yeshiva. That's that's another point. You made a nether, you got to give to them. But let's say no nether in, okay. a, in a case where they are giving you some sort of break, and then uh, uh, with with the understanding with that, the understanding that that's how much you can afford. And then you come into maybe it's more of an ethical question. Yeah, now you're then you a little you, different. You, now, you, now I made money. You made some money. Or, or you have to, you're giving tzedakah, or they're giving you seventy five hundred, and they know that you have a little bit left over for tzedakah. Are you obligated to give that remaining tzedakah to all of it? That- I mean, it's a hard question. So many variables. But all of your money should go to yeshiva's kid. No, obviously, should your money go to the yeshi- to your kid's Why, yeshiva? They're giving you some sort of break. And, Meaning and, they're they're they're, they're 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 compensating, and 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 now that you have you can afford to, to you can have more. it, or they they know that you have some leftover tzedakah. They they have their dinner journal or whatnot. Should someone feel guilty giving no. only half of their tzedakah to... No, no. no. Tzedakah should be spread. No one has an exclusive right to all my tzedakah. Tzedakah has to be spread out in some level. There's different things. There's, there's, there's different parts. There's achnosis kala. These are different in Yonim. That is right. different things that a person should be, you know, should be this, this in the Eretz Yisrael. A person shouldn't have any time chit tzedakah to Eretz Yisrael. I don't think that's... What about right. someone in debt? Do they... That's a good question. Even not, you don't have to get so dramatic. Let's yeah. say someone doesn't have a surplus. So what happens with Meiser? Right? Okay. But in debt, for Meaning sure. <laughs> if he does give Meiser, he'll go into debt. Oh, well, go, I didn't, I'm right. sorry. Yeah, okay. yeah, no, but I think that's the okay. same... Same type of... Same situation. So this gets back to my first point. You should separate Meiser. Rabbi Meiser says, well, if you se- first of all, sep- separating Meiser itself is a mitzvah. You should have a separate account. A person should never say, I'm not giving Meiser. It's not a healthy thing either because he's just not going to give Meiser. And then when he, if Mitzvah Shem, when things turn around, when does he start? When does he not start? So this is the rule I'm telling everybody. You have money coming in. It doesn't cover your budget. Hopefully it does, but there's no surplus. You separate Meiser. If you need the money to live, you take it as Meiser. You take the Meiser to live on. But you separated Meiser. There's always a Meiser account. No yid should be without a Meiser account. Practically, it doesn't work. But this is a great reason why. If you can't afford to live without using the Meiser, Rabbi Meiser says you could use the Meiser, but never stop taking Meiser. Never stop taking Meiser. Never go into debt to give other money away. That's mm-hmm. Terribly, terrible, terrible. Never go into debt. So never go into debt to take to give other people Meiser. It's not proper. And people do it. It's misguided, very misguided. Mm-hmm. But you should always separate Meiser. And you can't do it at another bank account. So that's another reason. Always separate Meiser. It should be another account that's untouchable. That's your Meiser account. Also, on a practical level, yeah. you need to have some money in, your, in that Meiser account for when you know, your, your, your cousin's wedding. And there has to be money set aside. This is the way it is. So you should have a separate account. Very important thing. Before we move on from Meister, what are some other things or 
an important thing people should keep in mind when it comes to MISER. And when you do say have another account, we spoke to someone, we mentioned this in a previous episode, bank tellers, especially in from areas, now know when you come in, you say, hey, I'd like to open up a second account. They're like, oh, that's the Maser account. That's you great. Know, I, not, I didn't know that. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's People great. Said, so this is becoming very... Um, it's, it's, it's becoming the norm okay, to I set tell you it up something. where I want to tell you the, the proper outlook on MISER. And, and I'm not telling you some weird ideology and theology. And I'm telling you the way it is. And I literally see it. And this also is another reason why I need another account. What happens is, and this is what this is what Chazal say, and it's one hundred percent true. I don't need, but it's really you'll see it. You really see it. The way it works is, and, and people sometimes look at it backwards. People look at it like they, they get their hundred thousand dollars, and then so ten thousand then goes to the Meister account. The way it works is is that the money in the Meister account, when it goes to Tadaka, that makes the next money come. It, it, it's the exact opposite. It brings in the bracha. Mm-hmm. It's, it's literally like that. When you write a check, you will see that that enables more money to come to your account. It's literally how it works. It's like these two things, like the one on the bottom, when you pull it, it's the, it tumbles in. And, and, and if, you, if, you will, if you'll open your eyes, you'll see it. I sat down with someone a little while back and I literally showed him this. It, it's, you write a nice check, whatever check you wrote, you will soon get nice... Ten times that into your bank account. Beautiful. It's not. It's not going that way. It's going. It's going bottom up. <laughs> right. Love that. So we received a couple of ethical questions. We touched on a couple before. Um, again, rapid fire. Feel free to pass on any if it's too complicated for this forum. Um, people wanted to know about ordering things from stores with the intent that you're going to return them at a later date, or most likely return them. Okay, first of all, we're, we're going to tread somewhat lightly on these type of shilas. I don't even I'm, like that question to begin no, with. No, no, no. I would no. say it's a complete no, don't it's ever do It's a complete no, okay. Right. So I'm not going to say, I'm, uh, there's no way I'm going to say it's mutter, but I, I want to just say, I want to tell you a story that happened. Great story. Um, my, my father-in-law comes to, comes to my family in the, in the summers, and uh, there was the end of one summer, we were davening in Chesid Shashul, in upstate, in South Fallsburg. And there was, wasn't that many people because the, the, it was... Um, you know, during the week, about so there was twenty five chaver there, and uh, we was I was sitting with my father in the back, and a chassidish shay guy gets up after the and he gives a club, and he says, "Rabbi Thai, ich darf <laughs> So, which means I have to say something. He says, "Ich bin a, he he is a he sells to Walmart. He sells to Walmart, and he goes to Ark. I didn't want to say Walmart, but I said it. So it, the cat's out of the hat. This is I'm going to say the story the way it was." He sells to Walmart. He goes to Arkansas twice a year to have meetings. He said he was sitting there, and this is what was going on. They were saying, <clears throat> what happens is people go upstate to, to the Catskills, mm-hmm. and they rent a lot of them rent bungalows. So when, now when you rent a bungalow, there's a lot of just knickknacks that you have to fill up in your bungalow, and it doesn't come with everything, right? So you need sometimes shades and brooms and, and, and pack and plays, whatever it is, right? So they don't want to buy it because they're renting this year. They don't know if they're renting next year. What are they going to do with all these things? So they go to Walmart. Mm-hmm. And if you go to Walmart in the beginning of the season of the summer, it's full. If you go in the middle of the summer, it looks like Russia. It's, it's all cleaned out. Mm-hmm. At the end of the summer, it all goes back. <laughs> Understand? Because there's a return policy, 90 days, which is perfect because they're not there in 90 days. Mm-hmm. So they're using Walmart as the world's greatest gemach. Mm. Okay. So this fellow, he said that Rabbi thought the oil was, they were handling with the lawyers that they're going to make an exception to that superstore upstate. They're going to have like a 15-day return policy. Mm. And they, the, lawyer, the question is, is it discrimination? Because it's pretty transparent what they're trying to do. Mm. And this was the discussion. So this Hasidish guy says, Rabbi thought ich bin nicht gepäufig, aber bei mir ist ein Schale von Chil Hashem. You understand? He said it's a Schale von Chil Hashem. So then someone told this Hasidish guy, that the Litvish apothek is though. <laughs> so, so he came over to my father-in-law and he said, you know, I, I didn't know you were here. So he said, he asked my father-in-law, what did you think about what I said? Mm-hmm. So my father-in-law said, good gesagt. <laughs> the one thing you said is wrong. It's not a shayla of chil Hashem. It's a chil Hashem. It's just a, chil, it's a straight out chil Hashem. So people should know like this. A lot of times with these type of shilas, you know, a guy's going to Detroit and, and his kids are just getting very restless. He pulls off and he goes into Best Buy and he buys a DVD player. Very common thing. And he plans on returning it on the way back. And I'm not going to get into this shila because I don't know the, all the details of what the kivun 
of Best Buy's policy. Maybe this is why they did it, because they know 50% of the people will keep it. Right. I have no idea. Right. They'll see, uh, uh, Uncle Moshi with a portable uh, DVD player is the greatest thing. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe they have no problem. I have no idea. I literally have no idea, and I'm not getting involved in this Shiloh. But I'm just telling you as follows. When it becomes like institutional, mm-hmm. on, on a community level, abuse, abuse on an institutional level is, is a massive, it's an institutional chel Hashem. Mm-hmm. Could there be anything worse than an institutional chel Hashem? It's not a yochid, it's just like Jewish people. Look what they're doing to Walmart, right? So that's, um, people shouldn't be involved in that, okay? Well said. <clears throat> Someone asked, can my parents take my bar mitzvah gift money? going to pass. Pass. We're going to pass. I like that. I don't love, I love that. It. I, don't no, love I love a good pass. Yeah. Cash advance. When I was growing up, I don't remember Yiddin in the hard money loans, cash advance. If I wanted to join that industry, that business, would you say probably no, stay no. away? No, no. Cash advance teaches... Cash advance to, to, to Goyim. It teaches people to be high Royce. Animals. Literally animals. The cash advance business is... A lot of parts of it, it's constructed in a way to destroy, to not help him, to destroy the guy. It's done in a way where you're not, the, the guy is vulnerable. Mm-hmm. He needs cash immediately. He's taking, he's, he's signing himself up to a world of pain, you know? And there's an, there's an Amala way how people can, there's an Amala rate. Forget about ribbis. There's an Amala interest rate. Mm-hmm. And then there's just, you are a chayarua, you just, you're an animal. Mm-hmm. It's it's not. It's it, a person could could. It's a person could really get affected by that. It's a terrible, terrible thing. And uh, there are people that are making tons and tons of money in cash advance, and, and that is not kosher money. Oh, well said. Oh, kosher money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very good. <laughs> there actually is a book someone wrote many years ago yeah. that is yeah. titled okay. uh, Kosher Money. Um, okay, so we did speak about. I want to. I want to move back to um, Shabbos. Yeah. Am I allowed to schedule bank payments or other financial transactions to take place? My credit card is due. It's a on good question. Shabbos. I'm going to tell you a general rule. We hold me and you. We hold Shvisa's Kalim as much. We pass like this hill that that Shvisa's Kalim means is that you could take. Um, you could take a dye, this is from the times of the Mishnah, and put it in a, in a vat, and it gets dyed on Shabbos because it's a kalim. You're not doing an action. Things that are kalim is mutter. Um, and air conditioners are going on and off, and those are their ices, and that's fine. You understand? What you're discussing is really kalim. It's things that are happening, and, and money. And that we're talking about their abundance, and it's kalim, mm-hmm. and that's Pasha's mutter. I once, I once was with David Feinstein, and I asked him, you know, I asked him because the only caveat to that is Rabbi Moshe didn't like a lot, didn't like uh, Shabbos clocks. You know, and it's not it wasn't this Kabul. So I once asked Rabbi David, um, "What's the mice? Can you use a Shabbos clock?" You know, Rabbi Moshe says you can't. I said, "What's the mice? Can you use a Shabbos clock?" And, and the way I, the way I uh, articulated, I said, "Can you use a Shabbos clock?" Can, which means, can a person use it? So he looked at me. He's like, "Can I use a Shabbos clock?" No, I can't use it. But can you? You certainly can. Anyone can. In other words, it wasn't this Kabul. That's what he was saying. Mm-hmm. And it's people use. So if you use Shabbos clocks, then these Shilas are not not very big Shilas because ultimately what it is, it's it's digital ways of sending money. You're timing things to happen, and we hold Shri says Kalim is mutter. So that's 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 the basic answer. You mentioned Shabbos clocks, and this is not a kosher money question, but Shabbos lamps over the last ten years have become ubiquitous. Every house you go yeah. to has a Shabbos lamp. Is there anything people should keep in mind? Yeah, when people they're... don't realize you can't move a Shabbos lamp. You can't move it. You can't move it. It's muksa. So, but I, you very, could... a lot of people are nichshul in this. But, but closing and closing opening... and opening is not a problem because right. it's that's just a separate piece. And but to move it from not a point A to point B yeah, on the dresser, you're not supposed to move it. And and. Um, some of them, there's different types. There's the old-fashioned ones, the big yeah, clunky yeah, the ones. Yeah, wooden ones that weigh 40 pounds. No, 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 no. I, even now, oh. but like they're taller, and, and the newer ones are like... The white ones. The, the white ones, yeah, great, yeah. great. The, the wooden ones that you turn, that's the more the okay, old style. Okay, so those yeah, yeah. ones that have like a window. Yeah, yeah. Okay, those are heavy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's funny, we're talking about show. Those are heavy, and when you turn it, it doesn't turn the base. And that's... the okay. People should know that the little black ones... Um, a lot of times, it's like you pop it up, you turn oh, the it. black one, yeah, yeah. A lot of times when you flip it and print it up, you're going to move it. You move and you should it, be right. careful about that. Maybe tape it down. I don't know. I, it's People are nichshul in this. Right. Shouldn't right. be moving it. Right. Once and if you, you, maybe, maybe if you move it, like, yeah, I, 
to take it and move it is not beseder. Become very comfortable with it because once yeah. you have it in the house, oh, it's mutter. It came in a in a kosher box. You know, the the institution yeah. said it was kosher. So now once it's next to me, oh, I'll move it. No one's actually right. even. And again, we talk about those private versus public. Um, instances, uh-huh. no one's there to that's tell you. That's a good you. point. That's no really, to... really bechedri chedarim. Right, that's in your right, bedroom. Right. That's a good right. point. That's a good point. You could do that, and people won't. won't yeah, you're right. You're talking right. Ordering Amazon deliveries that will arrive on Shabbos. So ordering it, that, so it's like this: a person shouldn't overnight something if he has an option not to overnight. So, which means like this: if you go on a website and you order something and you just order it, and they say. It's an overnight delivery. I didn't ask him to overnight it. I just ordered it. This is what they offered me, so that's okay. That's the Mufush Mishabur, that if you tell a guy to do something... It doesn't say Amazon, the Mishabur, right? No, 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 no. no. He speaks about that's a Gentile. A no, that's a good point. He speaks <laughs> about a Gentile he told to do, and he says, I'm doing it on Shabbos. Right. And Mishabur is less limbo. You didn't tell him to do it on right. Shabbos. Right. If I order something, and they're not giving me options. They're just telling me that this is when we're going to deliver it. Deliver whatever you want. I never told you when to deliver it. But when you have options... And then you pick Shabbos, that becomes problematic. You're scheduling, you're scheduling. It. What if that's the if default? If it's an overnight, it, it, I order, I ordering something on Friday. The default on my Amazon Prime is that it's going to come. So Amazon Prime is a little complicated. I'll tell you why. Because let's take not not Amazon Prime. Let's mm-hmm. say I'm ordering something from Apple.com, mm-hmm. and I'm ordering it on Friday, and it says it's going to come on Shabbos. Okay, so this is what they want to do. Then you know, knock yourself out. Deliver it on Shabbos. Amazon, imagine I wouldn't pay Prime. They wouldn't, I wouldn't have that option on Friday to deliver it on Shabbos. So now you paid for that schos for them to deliver. So it gets a little sticky. So now you're going to say, no, I paid Amazon Prime because I want the music system. The mm-hmm. streaming system. I'm not saying they're right or wrong, but there's a different variable, man. Amazon. When you're paying to be in that club to get overnight delivery, mm-hmm. it, it, it becomes more of a shyla. It becomes much more of a shyla. It is, then there's Where more... he might be better off to select two days to yeah, get it on right, Sunday. Right, right, right. Now, if, you, uh, if it's two-day delivery, I just want to bring something out. If it's two-day delivery starting on Thursday and it's going to arrive on Shabbos, it's not a problem because mm-hmm. they could deliver it on, on, on Friday. Mm-hmm. But overnight from Friday to Shabbos is somewhat of a problem. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Google ads. Someone has a business. They're doing, um, they create marketing ads. You can go on Google to run banner yeah. ads on websites. Is that an issue? Um, is that an issue? I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you uh, like this. It's not an issue, Me'ikra Din. It's not an issue because like we said, I'm saying whatever's happening is, is happening by itself. There is a halacha that a person is not allowed to do things that he's going to be doing a lot of Shabbos, even though the issue is really to talk business on Shabbos, and we should get back to talking about business on Shabbos because it's somewhat of an issue. But, mm-hmm. but um, a person's allowed to think about business on Shabbos. That's halacha. A person's allowed, a person's allowed to take a walk and think about business. Dabra um, Dover, only talking is out there. But Mishabura says, and he brings to the Prim Garden, that a person can't do something the way he knows now he's going to be doing a lot on Shabbos. A person has to have manucha on Shabbos. Now, sometimes these people set up very expensive um, ad campaigns, and they could be losing money, they could be making money. If the website is not working properly, mm-hmm. or something needs a small tweak, or somebody undercut them, they could be losing a lot of money. If they find themselves, excuse me, if they find themselves doyega love, then they might want to, they might, they might have a problem. You know, it might not be so appropriate to do that. You, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, but if it's not, if it's something that runs this Seder and you don't think about it, I don't think it's an issue. I don't think it's an issue. Now, I'm getting back to talking about yes. talking business on Shabbos, um, if I may. <laughs> There's a halacha Friday afternoon. Um, at a certain point, Friday afternoon, you're not, if, you, you, if you do business, you're not going to see Simon Bracha. That certainly applies to talking business on Shabbos. There's an issue to talk business on Shabbos. Sometimes well, what I, if you say Nish Shabbos Karat? <laughs> <laughs> I, that is one of the oldest like like what's there's a word for it uh, it's Nishkabal though after all these years it's, yeah, it's Nishkabal <laughs> right Nishkabal Shabbos Kret means you're not allowed to do it and then you do right. it it's like the weirdest thing and then people really like some of these Alta Hungarian ladies like, right. so you, know, you don't know what you want for your life I said it before you know? anyway the point is is that first of all this is Nishkabal you know, I'll talk business and Shabbos but you should also know if that doesn't talk to you that you will not see some bracha. You talk on Shabbos, and sometimes not not in my shul, chas v'shalom, but certain times you, I'm in a shul and there's like a back room, you know, on the way to the basic kisi, there's a back room, mm-hmm. and there are men talking. And I, I'm not listen. There are people who it's hard for them to stay during davening, which is long, and they mm-hmm. have uh, AD, whatever it is. So mm-hmm. they go into the back. Listen, they're not talking in shul. I'm not. I'm, I'm not judging them at all. But when men get together and they're talking, they're usually not talking about shoes that they bought or if they're shopping. They're talking about things that interest them, and, and the words a lot of times I hear is like financing and, and, and appraisals, and the, 
and it's it's not Peseder. You, you know, you take, you might have had a good deal there. <laughs> and the Mishabur explains what it means. You not gonna have seven bracha. Don't think when a deal goes through and you did well means well. <laughs> I, I beat that one. Mishbur says, which means the money is going straight through your pocket. You know, and the tax, the t- IRS is calling and they're saying, we recalibrated, there's, there's a $40,000 discrepancy. Fork it over and your accountant says, just don't fight it. They, they, they're going to go deeper. Just don't fight it. And that's, that's the problem. So, so, so you're going to lose that money. Don't, it's, 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 it's really important. And, and, and I'm, I'm like uh, very vigilant about this. I, the people that I care about, I'm like, just don't do it. Don't, mm-hmm. Talk about business on Shabbos. People should be aware of that. I live in a community I just found out in my shul. There's a share every Monday and Wednesday night where they talk about questions yeah, that we've discussed. That's which, great. Which I think is amazing. That's terrific. Have you seen that being... And, and I see that... Definitely. As, a re, like a revolution. Yeah. Totally. totally. There's tons of different organizations that opened up to try to address this. And I'm, I'm not taking credit for it, but right. but, but it, it definitely... I'm, that's what I'm telling you. There was a vacuum. And, and there's much, much more interest. Much more interest. Um... Other than your book, um, in, in addition to your book, if a yachid who's not in a community where he has access to a shear, what and and he wants to learn, he he has an industry where he does have questions, he hasn't asked questions, and he's listening to this. We have the base yeah. of I'm part of the base of which is a bezdin. We have something called the Yerucha program, which is like a one year program that goes from sugi to sugi, um, like a week or two at a time, addressing basic business halacha things. There's, there's a shifty program which Base Manager Gavaya has. There's a lot, of, and you could be remote. It could be remotely. Mm. In it. There's a lot of programs that a person. And again, there's so many. I'm not the only book. There's, it depends. You know, if a person's in financing, he has to learn about ribis. Mm-hmm. Ribis is impossible. It's very hard to learn ribis. Mm-hmm. Well, what can I tell you? I'm not telling you to know all the halachas of ribis, but you have to know the basics. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I should have brought that as an example because ribis is a. Uh, this is a very big one. It's 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 its tentacles are in every industry basically. Mm-hmm. And a person has to know all partnerships. Guys are taking home equity lines personally and dumping it into the business. The business is paying him and he's paying the thing. It's Ribis der Isa. Most basic thing you can, as I said this, there were three people mm-hmm. <laughs> who said what? <laughs> it's Ribis der Isa, you know, because the the home equity line is to you, it's not to the business. So you're loaning the business money. Basically you're loaning your partner's money. And now your partners are paying you. They're not paying the bank. The bank doesn't know who they, who the partners are. And this is the Gemara says. No, I'm not. This is not my case that I made up. This is the Gemara is about this. And and this happens all the time, especially with partnerships and money going in and the charging ribbons. You have to write head to is because you have to understand what head to is when it works, when it doesn't work. And if you find yourself in such a thing where loans are happening and and there's the interest payments being made, you you really have to learn the basics. And and ribbons is not easy, but. Uh, this is what you signed up for. You have to, right. you have to, you have to educate yourself. A closing thought: yeah. something you want people to walk away from this one-hour, amazing episode. Um, a closing thought. I think we covered the, a, a lot of different things, but this is, I believe, the, the 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 most important thing that people should come out with is that if if you are, if you, I'm just going to give an example. If you're running like a uh, 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 Don't say wife, nursing home. No, no, your wife. She's running a kitchen. Okay. See that? Totally. <laughs> your wife's running a kitchen. If she goes a few years and never had a Shiloh in the kitchen, it, it usually means that she doesn't know what a Shiloh looks like. That's the truth. And unless she's really. And you know, same thing with. Unless with she's men the daughter of a Rob and a, she really knows Yeridea and she's just passing on the spot. <laughs> but if not. Unfortunately, it means that you don't know what a shy looks like. And, and I've heard you say that also about men, women in business. If you're right, going that's through, my point. Yeah, yeah. If you if you're in business for years and years, you never asked a Shaila. I, I hate to say this, and I'm not just I'm not I don't mean Khalila to be mekatrig or to be an indictment on Yidden, but if you never had a Shaila, th- that is the ultimate red flag. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. It, it seems it would seem that either you really have it all figured out or you. That, that m- probably means you don't know what a shy looks like. And you need to audit your business. And like, where are my vulnerabilities? Where I have to start asking shy lists. Beautiful. Start asking questions. Thank you, Rabbi Krishna. <laughs> okay. Take care, Kalta. Very good. This podcast has been hosted by my brother, Ellie Langer, produced by me, Yaakov Langer, and brought to you by Living L'Chaim. To check out other podcasts from Living L'Chaim, go to livinglechaim.com. Check out our YouTube channel, Check up Living the Chaimah podcasts and do your thing. Until next time, enjoy life. Living the Chaimah.